To start our trial, we're gonna start by getting a sense of how the hemp fiber mat responds to water. Now, water is super important because plants need it in order to uh, engage in photosynthesis. And it's also through the water that nutrients are delivered to the plant. So water is a super important part of crop growth. And I'm gonna do trials with the 1020 tray and with the paper pot tray because water could actually move in each of these mats very differently because of the edges here. So I'm gonna do those a little separately. Now, you don't need to see me for this, so what I'm gonna do is get an angle where we can look at these. Now this trial is gonna take a little bit of time. We're just gonna pour some water on these and see what happens and take a look. Uh, we're gonna pour some in here. There's gonna be some excess in here. We're gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna use like a good distribution method or anything like that. I'm just gonna introduce water. And we're gonna observe for a little bit to see what happens, to see how the, the fiber mat changes. Uh, and then we're gonna let them sit to see what happens over time. How quickly these dry out, if one dries out quicker than the other, anything like that. So just some basic observations. So once we've gone through that and given it some time, we'll come back and revisit those and start making some uh, comments on the observations. And from those observations, we're gonna start thinking about, okay, how is this gonna affect how we grow relative to soil? We're going into this, growing everything in soil. And so there's a technique, there's a strategy, there are, everything is about soil and the principles we use for growing in soil may not hold for fiber mats. So we need to look toward uh, where we're gonna adjust those. So let's take a look at some water here. Okay, so on the right, we have our 1020 tray and on the left, we have our paper pot tray and we're gonna take a look how they respond to water. Now, I have never seen a hemp mat wet at this point. Um, I'm going into this very green, so I'm very excited about what's gonna happen here. So, start with our 1020 tray. I'm gonna pour some water in there. So as I do this, right away we can see a pattern. We can see the water is going down. It's not spreading outward yet. Now let's just let that sit for a second, actually. See what happens. And I'll do the same thing here. And I expect that's not gonna be any different here just because of the tray. We can see it works its way down. We're not getting a huge amount of spreading there. And you can see the difference, you know, here I only had a little bit of water. And so we see that it's, it's very responsive in that regard. So that's just a good thing. Water moves down fairly, fairly quickly. And it looks like the mat kind of gets a little uh, reduced. So the weight of the water brings the mat down a little bit. So there we go. So just gonna put a lot of water in there. And so there I've put in, you know, several cups of water. Um, I'm gonna put more in here and I'm not seeing, I'm just seeing a little bit leaking out below. We can see some there below. So we can see it's holding on really well. So now we're really gonna, now we're really gonna give it to the mat. And I'm gonna need to go get a little bit more water here. So one thing I'm thinking about here is what we're doing here is the initial watering. The, the mat is completely dry, and so what we're kind of doing is hydrating it. And if you've used peat or coir, you know you kind of have to do something similar. Coir often comes in compacted bricks, and so you need to uh, hydrate it in order to expand it and get it ready for use. And even with peat, uh, like a peat-based soil, even though the peat might be loose and ready to use, you often need a little bit of water to give it some stickiness uh, so it holds together well in the trays, and so it's not, um, uh, it's not, you know, when you're preparing it, the, the dust isn't getting up and into your eyes, which can actually be uh, a real pain in the ass. So one thing uh, already I'm noticing and wondering about, and I'll fill up my water as we're looking, is I'm wondering about how well the water diffuses through the hemp mat. And so we can see it's quite saturated here. You can see it pooling there. And even these little bits here, like this bit up here, the water still hasn't diffused up in there. And th if this was say like a paper towel, that would happen very quickly. But we're still very early here, so we don't need to rush. We'll see what's happening here. Again, if I'm gonna do uh, a preparation, what I might end up doing is soaking the mat for half an hour or an hour. And that's gonna be the time potentially where, where my seeds are soaking. So 
These are things I'm keeping in mind. We're going to do our paper pot here. I'm going to leave some of this stuff around here just to see what happens. So this is really just getting a sense of how water moves within these fiber mats. Still see it fairly dry there. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to let these sit for a bit and then we'll come back and take a look in, a, you know, we'll say a few minutes. It is 11.55, whatever that uh, means to you. And so I'm just going to keep track of time and see what this looks like over time and see how much the water moves. And that's going to give us a sense of some of the water dynamics in the hemp mat. And here we are after 10 minutes. So what I see is there's not a lot of change in the distribution of water. And so this diffusion of water amongst the dry tray is an important thing to keep in mind. And to get a sense of what I was kind of expecting, I wondered, you know, I'm thinking about, well, how does this diffusion compare to what happens in a paper towel? And you see how quickly that water moves. Now this is, you know, not a perfect comparison, but it moves. And even if there was a little water, it would move through osmosis. And I'm just using this little spot here as an indicator. Like it's really, not until I touch it, the water's taking a bit of time there. So what I, what I see is water takes a bit of time to diffuse through this medium. Not necessarily a good or bad thing, it's just something I'm observing. Now it looks like the water in the tray here is increasing, which means the water where it's saturated is leaving the tray, leaving the, the, the mix, the uh, grow mat, before diffusing into the rest of it. So that's just a really interesting uh, property. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna play with that. So what I'm thinking already is this mat needs a good saturation before use. So that's our 1020 tray, which I think ended up getting a little bit more water. This one here, we can see the water has not diffused much, and there's only a little bit underneath here. So some got through, and some didn't. So here's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm gonna lift this guy out of here. And observe the dripping. Now I do this with soil, if I sort of often oversaturate a soil, is I chip it at an angle, and look up here. You can see up here, oh, you can't, sorry. Up here, you can see the water leaving. So the water is working its way down. And so what we're kind of doing, if we use soil terminology, is seeing the water content in this mat shift from saturation to field capacity. Okay, so the drip is getting a little lower. Let's see, it's dried out. Now it's damp here and down here still a bit more. Now just for fun, we're just gonna turn this around. So the water's more on the top. I can hear the water and you can see it. You can see the water is now moving its way back down through the mat, less up on top now and more on the bottom. So the water moves really, really well through this, this fiber mat, which I think is, is, a, is a very good thing. There's actually quite a bit there on the bottom that drains out and our little break in there gives us a good little drainage point. So this is a really interesting property that I was not expecting. So just understanding that is good. So I'm just gonna, I can see that this will continue to drain. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna work with the 1020 tray right now. Let's give that a feel. So that's pretty moist. I'm gonna lift it up out of here. So this is, you know, it's obviously a lot heavier, but it's not like a huge ton of water. And the water is, what that is in there is holding really well. So we can see again, this is dripping out. So the tendency of the mat is going to be not to, uh, not to saturate. And so this is where really good drainage and really good watering strategies is going to be important. If I overwater but give it good drainage, the excess water should drain out. But this, the mat isn't going to hold a huge amount of water. Uh, and so it's only going to hold a specific amount. So the question will then be how long it takes that water in the tray to evaporate uh, or to get uptaken by the plant. So where, whereas I currently will water once a day or maybe once every other day in my home system, 
it makes me wonder if I'm going to have to water twice a day. So maybe not. You know, there's still a decent amount of water in there. I really feel the weight difference. And in past videos, I've talked about weight as a way of indicating that, uh, what's happening in your tray. The other thing is once there is a crop growing in here and it starts to root, those roots are going to kind of create a little bit of space that may help water retention overall. Um, I can see if I'm handling this too much, I'm getting some tearing here, so I need to be careful there. So this paper backing is really delicate, which is good because what we want is for the roots to be able to go through there quite easily. So moving over here to look at the paper pot tray, I'm going to do something a little different because I'm thinking about my basically my hydration strategy. And so I kind of imagine, yeah, see this is a little delicate now. When I saturate this, move this around quite easily. So this is a method that needs to be refined. So I'm already thinking about just what methods are going to be. And now this drains really easily. And then I might put it in there to finish its draining. So there's going to be, I think, a hydration phase with the mats. Gets them ready for use by getting hydrated. And again, something similar that we would experience using Quar. If it's coming in a compacted brick, then we are going to want to hydrate that before we use it. Now the handling here is an issue. You can see it's, it's tearing quite easily. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a tray like this with a bunch of water in it, maybe even deeper. I can drop that in so it's totally saturated. I can see the water coming up through the holes. If it's evenly distributed, it's going to get the whole mat. And then when I lift it up, I'm going to get some good drainage out of there. So this is just going to be more about technique in that regard. And in that way, I imagine the paper pot tray is going to be an advantage because I can actually still feel these upper edges here of this fiber mat here are actually still a little bit dry. And so if I want to have a really quick technique, it looks like the, 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 the fiber mat uh, in the paper pot tray with more space around it might actually be an advantage. So now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to let these sit for a while. I'm actually going to put them, I'm not sure where I'm going to put them actually. Actually, I'm going to put them above my current growing system and I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to check on them later in the day. Uh, I'll leave them all night and basically to next morning. And so We'll kind of leave them for 24 hours uncovered. So then we're just dealing with evaporation. There's no uptake by plants, so that's not a factor. And there's also no cover on here. So keeping in mind, if I cover this with seeds, it's going to reduce the rate of evaporation. I'm going to leave that. So I'm just going to see what happens in terms of how well the fiber mat holds water uh, at room temperature with no seed and nothing, no heat mat, nothing, just to see what it does. So that's it for the start of this. So let's see what happens tomorrow and we'll add that to the series as we shoot it. So another little thing I'm just sort of looking at here that I want to just sort of share. So I've left this mat in the paper pot tray and I haven't moved it. And so I see by not moving it, it's still really, really well saturated. And it's only when I take it and lift it up that we see the water starting to move. And literally you can see it moving uh, you can see it within the mat and you can see this upper part. I guess you can't quite see it all and it might be a little tough in the video. But you know the darker areas have water and the lighter areas don't. And so I see that it drains. So again, I don't need to pick this thing up and do that ever in my production process. So when I think about hydrating, what I might do in my home system is put it in here, spray it above, let any sort of residual water drain and that's ready to go. In a commercial system, I might have 16, 50 trays out at a time. I wet them all and then maybe I stack them and they're ready to go. So I'm not going to hydrate them, you know, a day ahead of time or something like that. That doesn't seem to make sense. I'm going to hydrate them just before sewing because I see it really absorbs the, wa the water well. 
So yeah, I think it's possible that draining it off like this is not a good idea. However, we need to take in mind if there is too much water being held in there and it's not draining out, that might be a little bit too much water for the seeds as they're germinating. So these are things we'll need to work out. Uh, what I might end up doing is say cutting these in half, leaving one so it's, it ends up you know, just being totally saturated and naturally draining, and the other one where we drain off excess water so this is just damp. So those are strategies we're gonna look at to determine what's gonna give us the best germination, and then we'll have to look at what's gonna give us the best growth when we get to the next stage. So here are our mats after sitting overnight. And uh, so here's sort of what I did. Uh, I, I left the mats just sitting out. I checked them, I checked their weight at, uh, in the evening, so after about eight hours. And at that point they had lost about 25% of the water they were holding. And then checking them this morning, they've lost about 60%. And so that's not necessarily useful information, though in my experience, that's actually pretty good water retention. The reason being, uh, you know, if this was a tray of soil, it would hold water for many, many days before it really dried out. And these mats are pretty close to, to dry it out now. Um, I could just feel a bit of dampness in there. And then you can see I'm just sort of comparing them to what they look like to a, um, a non-wetted uh, fiber mat there. Um, but these things have a very, very large surface area and uh, they're not very thick. So you would expect them to lose water very, very quickly. And I had actually half expected them to be completely dry. So the fact that they're still holding some water is uh, looking really good. When we add seeds to the top and when we've got them covered with another tray, just like with soil, there's going to be very little... Um, <clears throat> space for the water to escape to evaporate and so it should hold the, they should hold the water pretty well during the germination process the thing i need to determine which is what i will work on next is how wet am i going to get that get this fiber mat uh, for germination do i want it fairly saturated do i want it sort of at field capacity that needs to be determined and what's sort of the best process um, these, as they are, they kind of slip around a little bit, and so seeding on them might be a, a bit of a challenge. So what I'm thinking at the moment is once I put this in the tray, I'm going to give it a spray with a water bottle. So I get a very, very good uh, in, uh, distribution of water, but just a little bit. And that's going to kind of help it stick to the tray. Then I can put my seed on top, and then I can water again over top. Now, I'm not going to do the lazy watering that I did with just a, you know, a, a measuring cup for these trials, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little um, a shower feature and I'm just actually going to do that at my kitchen sink. So on a commercial scale, I might have a hose and nozzle I can do that uh, with either a mist setting or a shower setting that allows really even distribution. Uh, and at home, I've got a shower setting on my kitchen tap. So that works perfectly for the two trays of production that I typically do at a time. Um, the reason I'm looking at the shower setting and distribution again is because when we saw we poured the water just in very specific spots, it does not diffuse very quickly, if at all. And so we want to make sure that distribution is really good because any dry spots is going to result in seed that's not going to germinate. So there's a few lessons that, that we've learned here from this process. So number one. Um, yeah, the, the water is slowly diffuses, which means it doesn't move from areas of high water content to low water content very quickly. Um, if you come into contact with the dry areas, it'll pull up the water really quickly, but it doesn't move on its own very quickly at all. Um, number two, the mats become quite delicate once they're wet. You can see the one up at the top here got, got torn. Um, and so you really, once they're in a tray, we don't want to handle them. We don't want to move them from one tray to another, anything like that. Uh, so that's simple. And then three, um, if there is, if for some reason we do end up with too much water in a tray, in a mat, we learned that by holding the tray up vertically, the water will drain out really well. So a saturated mat, when it's just horizontal, actually holds the water really well which is why we want to be very careful about our water content upon germination. But if we find there's too much water in there, probably even with seeds on top, we can tip up the tray. That's going to pull some of that water out. So there's some options there that we don't have with soil, because if you oversaturate a soil uh, at sowing time, it can be very, very difficult to manage that. 
and it really increases the likelihood of disease. So my next step now is going to be to sow a crop and I am actually going to sow uh, both a wheatgrass and a sunflower. I had only planned on doing the wheatgrass but it's actually time within my home production cycle to sow both of those and so at this point I might as well um, might as well do both. Uh, I'm going to do one in the paper pot tray and one in the 1020 tray and then we'll see what kind of results we get there and yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of uh, growth we get. Uh, the next video will show the sewing process and the prep process so we'll get into that next.